I'll be completely honest, I've never really enjoyed open fit earbuds. That's not to say they're bad though, they definitely fit the needs of a lot of people who need to keep an ear out for their surroundings while still enjoying music. I just haven't really been wowed by open fit earbuds recently, but the Apple AirPods 3rd gen are actually pretty good. If you think about which earbuds are the most iconic, I think there's no denying that the AirPods are the most recognized earbuds in the world. After two generations of the AirPods though, Apple has kind of changed up the design of the AirPods 3rd gen and added a bunch of new features. Let's look at the design first. The case itself is more reminiscent of the AirPods Pro case, longer rather than taller, compared to the AirPods 2nd gen case. That being said, it's smaller on most aspects than the AirPods Pro case, just being ever so slightly taller at 4.64cm versus 4.52cm on the AirPods Pro. And it's also lighter, at slightly under 38 grams for the case. The earbuds themselves are also pretty light at 4.28 grams. The case itself is MagSafe compatible now, so that means that you can put it onto any MagSafe charger and it'll pretty much snap in place. So I actually brought one that I have at home to kind of show this. So yeah, pretty cool. What I would have really liked to see though is the ability to reverse wireless charge from an iPhone with MagSafe. This could very well be in the works for future AirPods, I don't know, but it would be insanely convenient if I could just charge my, my AirPods and my Apple Watch through the back of my iPhone, especially if I'm out on the go. That being said, these can be charged off the MagSafe battery pack if you have one. I don't, so yeah. As for the earbuds, they look a lot like the AirPods Pro. They have a much more noticeable microphone grill at the top of the stem, and there's supposed to be an acoustic mesh that reduces wind noise, which does seem to avoid the earbuds picking up the wind noise from my fan blowing straight at my face at home, which is good. There's also a new skin detect sensor added to the earbuds, which means you won't have to worry about the earbuds inaccurately detecting that it's being worn and playing music, even if they're out of your ears. Most earbuds use optical sensors, and if the sensor's blocked by fabric or the likes, that's enough to keep the earbuds on, which you wouldn't want, especially if you keep earbuds in your pocket without putting them back in the case and such. That being said, if you're like me, and you like taking out one side to kind of hold a conversation, but you still want music to keep playing, just hold that side in your fist like this, and it'll be enough to trick the sensor to continue playing music. There are two acoustic vents on the top and back, as well as a new 11mm custom driver, both built specifically for the AirPods 3rd gen. More than just that though, an inward-facing microphone has been added to each earbud because Adaptive EQ is coming to the base AirPods. Adaptive EQ is a feature that we've seen before on the AirPods Pro and the AirPods Max, and it's essentially Apple sort of tuning the music that comes out of the earbuds to ensure a consistent listening experience. The earbuds are powered by the same H1 chip that's in the AirPods Pro. And for my next point, I have to say a big thank you to Apple because they have brought my favourite thing from the AirPods Pro to the base AirPods, and it's the force sensor. You know how they say imitation is the highest form of flattery? Well, I'm hoping that all other earbud manufacturers who still come out with stem designs to kind of pick up this idea from Apple because it is way easier to use force presses to kind of control your music, your volume control, all that kind of stuff rather than trying to swipe and tap at a really thin stem. As for touch controls, press once for play pause, twice to skip forward, thrice to skip backwards, and a long press and hold brings up Siri. Super simple. Unfortunately, there's no volume control here and it's something that I would actually like to see in future iterations because yes, you can ask Siri to control your music volume but it's not always convenient to be talking to your voice assistant. Moving on to features, there's not a lot per se. There's no ANC here because, well, it's open fit and ANC wouldn't work too well in this situation. And besides, if you want ANC, there's always the AirPods Pro. Likewise, because there's no ANC, there's no transparency mode because the open fit design is pretty much already letting in, you know, exterior noise. But there is spatial audio with dynamic hit tracking and it's actually quite fun. For music listening, I tend to use fixed spatial audio, but if you're watching a movie or a show, dynamic hit tracking is really quite immersive. 
It's something that I didn't expect to come to the base AirPod, so it's really nice that Apple has decided to include them here. These are running on Bluetooth 5.0, which isn't the newest and the latest, but connectivity is rock solid and there's no latency that I noticed. As usual, codec support is limited to SBC and AAC, which is pretty much par for the course with Apple's audio products. Now, a point to note here is that Apple actually recommends using these with devices that have the latest software versions. So basically, iOS 15.1, iPadOS 15.1 and such. It's not so much that you won't be able to use the AirPods 3rd gen if you're not completely up to date, but more that certain functionality won't work as well. So basically, iCloud pairing for one, as well as whether your device is able to recognize that the AirPods are 3rd gen. Anyway, there's really no reason not to update your devices, so yeah. Battery life has been improved with 6 hours here compared to the 2nd gen's 5. Apple claims that this drops down to 5 hours with spatial audio enabled and I found that that was relatively accurate. I got around 4.5 hours when listening to music at around 50-60% to volume. I did find myself listening to music at a higher volume as opposed to my regular 30-40% to and that's because it's open fit which means you, know, you kind of have to raise the volume to kind of counteract your environment. Something that you want to take note of here is that Dolby Atmos tracks are actually playing at a lower volume compared to just regular stereo. If you're not big on spatial audio, turn the feature off and your music will be louder for sure. But if you do want to keep spatial audio on, you will notice that there is a rather big jump in volume when you switch from a Dolby Atmos track to a non-Dolby Atmos track. And the way to kind of get rid of that is by going into settings, uh, Apple Music, and then enabling the sound check feature. So what it does is basically equalizes the gain so that you don't have, you know, you don't get a shock when a non Dolby Atmos track comes on. Microphone quality is very decent and well, you'll be able to hear it for yourself. While on FaceTime calls, my voice came across really clearly and the person on the other end said that even though I had a fan that was pretty much blowing at my face, there was no wind noise at all, which is great. On Google Meet calls with my coworkers though, I did get feedback that certain words were occasionally a bit distant sounding, but all in all, still okay. But we come to sound quality now, and it's actually surprisingly good. Now, I've actually never tried the AirPods 2nd gen. My only experience has been with the first ever AirPods, the AirPods Pro and the AirPods Max. But yeah, these sound much better than I remembered and much better than I expected. Sure, I had to raise the volume slightly, but the bass, which is usually one of the first things to go in an open fit um, design earbud, was actually still present and quite impactful. Mids and vocals were very decent as well. You get plenty of separation, air and clarity, although I did feel that the treble could have been a bit more emphasised. Vocal layering though, wow. I was listening to Starcross by Casey Musgraves and at the 1 minute and 43 second mark, the supporting male vocal comes in and it's just kind of crazy how you can get that kind of layering and separation and quality out of open fit earbuds. I know, part of it has to do with Apple's spatial audio tech, but regardless, it's still very impressive. The soundstage is wide, you get plenty of air and there's just that musicality, snap and crispness there. All in all, if I had to listen to one pair of open fit earbuds for like the next year or something, it would probably be these. Truth is, these are Apple's entry-level earbuds, and while yes, they are pricey at 269 Singapore dollars or 179 US, they work well. Seamless pairing with your other Apple products is a huge plus, and I'm really a big fan of Apple's spatial audio tech, which you'll be able to enjoy because, you know, there's support for it now. Open fit earbuds still aren't really for me, honestly. I would still go for the AirPods Pro over the base AirPods. But if you need to hear your environment and you know you still want to get really good music quality, these are probably the best open fit earbuds on the market right now, especially if you're using an iPhone. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the new Apple AirPods 3rd Gen. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to us. Till next one. See you guys.